Hi, uh, this paper is titled Using Knowledge Graphs and Behavior Trees for Feedback Aware Presentation Agents. I am Nils Axelsson. My co-author is Gabriel Skanse. We are both from the Division of Speech, Music and Hearing at KTH, which is the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, this work was funded by SSF. You can visit the website of our uh, project at coinssf.se. So in this paper, we are trying to address the problem of how to create adaptive presenting agents. And uh, an example of what that might look like can be seen here on the right of this uh, picture. Presentation is a special case of dialogue. It's, um, I would say it's a sub uh, genre of dialogue. Uh, one party, which is the presenter, uh, is expected to talk more than the audience. Uh, and the audience is, as a consequence of this, not expected to take the turn a lot. And it's important for the presenter to be able to interpret the feedback by the audience uh, to adapt the presentation as a, as a result of this. We see this as a grounding problem. And when I say grounding, I mean common ground and not uh, symbol grounding. In 2019, we previously presented how to use a behavior tree for this grounding and presentation problem combined. And through a user evaluation in that paper, we were able to show that users preferred an adaptive system enabled by this approach to a scripted system that wouldn't adapt to their feedback. Grounding for presentation is a very large problem and it can be broken down into several subproblems. And each of those problems is a research area of its own right. But the process really starts when the user gives some feedback. And when we say user here, we mean audience. So when the audience reacts to our presentation, we can't control this, but we can pick it up. And we have to pick it up, of course, physically on our sensors. We are using a Clarkian grounding model. So we have to map this provided feedback to some grounding level. And I will get into what those grounding levels are in a bit. We have to combine this classified feedback with what we already know about the user's state of mind to create their new state of mind. Kopp and Bushmeyer call this attributed listener state, and uh, they have done some great work in this box, uh, among other things, and they are not the only people who have done work in this box. This paper is mostly concerned with the final box, which is when we take the attributed listener state and we use that to adapt the presentation. A behavior tree is a tree model for ordering arbitrary tasks. They run in real time, so they aren't a data structure used by the grounding system that we present here. They are a representation of the actual grounding system. They have previously been used in robotics and video games for the past 20 or so years. Uh, we have not seen much use for them in dialogue systems, though. Uh, a very important property of behavior trees is that nodes return these three return values up the tree. So the three values are success, failure, and running. And these are passed up a tree. And depending on the return values, nodes in the middle of the tree may choose to run their children in a different order or to run a different subset of their children in response to them. There are two specific nodes in the middle of the tree that we use heavily in our tree. And those are the sequence and the selector. A sequence runs its children until one fails or until all succeed and a selector runs its children until one succeeds or until all fail. So by stacking these and putting them inside each other, we can represent any order of execution in the children of the, in the leaves of the tree. And the leaves of the tree are arbitrary programs that can either return success, failure, or running. And by ordering them by, with selectors and sequences, we can execute any behavior in any order. In uh, Herbert Clark's grounding model, there is positive and negative feedback, and that feedback is left on these four basic grounding levels, which are attention, hearing, understanding, and acceptance. There are two important processes here that we use for our behavior tree, which are upward completion and downward evidence. Upward completion means that if you give me negative feedback, explicit negative feedback on a low level of the ladder here, then that implies negative feedback on all levels above it. So if you give me negative hearing, that implies negative understanding and negative acceptance. Of course, if you couldn't hear me, then you can't understand me. And if you can't understand me, then you can't accept what I'm saying. And the other way around, if you give me positive feedback on a high level, then that implies positive feedback on all lower levels. So if you give me explicit positive understanding by, for example, saying, yes, I understand, then you have also given me implicit positive hearing and positive attention, because of course you wouldn't be able to 
understand me if you didn't hear me and you wouldn't be able to hear me if you weren't paying attention. And this kind of exclusion where the existence of one signal means we don't even have to check the others is why we think behavior trees apply well to this. If A, then we don't need to check B, C, and D. That's exactly what behavior trees do. Another part of Clark's uh, theory that we use a lot is this idea of a grounding criterion. Now, a grounding criterion is a feedback level that the participants in a dialogue agree that feedback should be left on for the dialogue to be able to continue as normal. So we can see a dialogue here on the right. This is a figure from our paper. And the rightmost column shows the system's approximated grounding criterion at all times, at all turns in this dialogue. So for our presenting system, it's important to be able to identify when the user thinks that the grounding criterion is lower than the system thinks it should be. And it's also important to be able to interpret when the user is responding with negative feedback, which raises the grounding criterion from their perspective. Uh, and of course, just like feedback is left in real time, this changing grounding criterion is also going to change in real time. So this kind of justifies why we want to use a real time model of our system. So the contributions of this paper then are an extension of our previous behavior tree to support incremental processing of user feedback, which we think is justified based on the real time aspects I just mentioned. Uh, an extension to use a knowledge graph as the grounding user model and also to syn synthesize the presentation. And finally, an evaluation through an experiment which showed that the types of adaptation that this enables are preferable to experiment participants. Wikidata is the relational database that we use to create our knowledge graphs. It is a relational database run by the Wikimedia Foundation. It is equivalent to DBpedia. Uh, we just arbitrarily used one over the other. In Wikidata, entities are connected by properties. And there is also a special case of entity, which is a constant, which may only appear as the target of a property. Uh, the triple of a source, a property, and a target is called a statement in Wikidata. So these three statements together here uh, span the idea that Piero da Vinci is the father of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, so the statement concept, the triple concept, is really a really maps to the idea of a theme and a ream in human dialogue. That is, what are we talking about and what are we saying about it? What are we talking about? The source of the property. What are we, what are we saying about it? The property and the target of the property. So we use this for our uh, dialogue synthesis. So how do we go from a Wikidata graph to a presentation then? Well, first we synthesize our graph from Wikidata. The synthesis process involves throwing away a bunch of data that we don't need and uh, compiling a local copy of the graph so we don't have to uh, rely on the sometimes slow Wikidata API. Then this is the repeatable part. We pick a property from this graph that can be expressed based on the current grounding state of the graph. We state this property and if needed we restate it with alternative referring expressions until it is grounded. And of course, restating would involve some going back and forth with the uh, graph. We take the user's feedback. We store their grounding state in the graph. So this is our user model as well as our presentation uh, structure. And then we go back to the, to the start and we pick another property and this repeats. And this is kind of how the presentation process goes. This is the behavior tree that creates the process that we mentioned on the previous slide. So we don't have time to go into detail exactly what every single node in this tree does, of course. But uh, on a high level, first we establish engagement with a user. We find someone to present to or several people to present to, of course. If a user has the turn or we allow them to get the turn and they want it, then we give them the turn. And if they already have the turn, then we give them evidence of attention. We try to meet their grounding criterion. If the user does not have the turn, or if a user doesn't have the turn, then the robot takes the turn or has the turn. We present, and then in order, we have attention, hearing, understanding, and acceptance in this tree. So these would create the Clarkian upward uh, completion uh, structure. And then we present. 
So presentation, of course, means that the tree has to coordinate with some external components. The tree can't do everything on its own. So the most visible of these would be the presenting agent, which is a fur hat agent in our case, which tells us who's there and also gives us access to speech synthesis. Uh, internally, we coordinate with a knowledge graph, which I already mentioned, and we also keep track of where we are in the current utterance and what parts of the current utterance have failed and succeeded based on a theme ream structure in a micro planner. Okay, so we're going to go through a very quick example of a dialogue uh, and show the updating grounding state uh, through the dialogue. So this is a fictional dialogue, but the responses by the system are representative. Uh, in the graph on the right, you will see that grounded properties are green and ungrounded properties are red. It is, in fact, properties that we consider to be grounded or ungrounded, not the nodes of the tree, not the entities. It is, as we can see, common ground and grounded that the painting has a creator. This would be grounded before the presentation even starts. It is grounded that a creator exists, not who that creator is. However, in this uh, state, we can see that it is also grounded that the creator has the name Leonardo da Vinci. So this, we can imagine that the system has said this to the user and has received positive feedback. And it has selected this property, this statement to present next, which is that Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452. So let's see how that goes. The system says da Vinci was b, and then the user uh, reacts with some negative feedback. Who? Now, since we said Da Vinci and not Leonardo Da Vinci, we don't know if the negative feedback was due to um, a misunderstanding about what Da Vinci refers to or a non-identification that Leonardo Da Vinci is Q762. So we try the full reference. We say Leonardo Da Vinci. The user now responds with more explicit negative feedback. Who was that? This allows us to unground the statement that Q762 has the name Leonardo Da Vinci. We then restate using another grounded property. We say the artist and the user responds with positive feedback. This allows us to reground the name property. We then attempt to say the ream uh, was born in 1452. The user does not respond. Uh, the user does not meet our grounding criterion, which is higher than just hearing. We, we expect understanding or acceptance here. So we try to restate to elicit feedback. We say around 600 years ago, using another grounded reference to 1452. The user does not respond again, so we use a very explicit strategy to uh, get feedback to raise the grounding criterion. We elicit by saying right, and the user responds to this by saying yeah, sure, I got it, which is very explicit positive acceptance, so we ground the property. And then this would repeat forever, of course, like I showed in the slide earlier. To evaluate our system, we created a bunch of local graphs from Wikidev. We used 100 paintings from the Louvre in France to do this because the Louvre is a very well-connected museum in Wikidata. We then created dialogues based on random paintings from this set and had the system present these to a simulated user, which would respond using certain preset feedback. And after a breakpoint, uh, evaluators on Mechanical Turk got to rank four options for how the system should continue, for what the system should say next to repair the negative feedback. Uh, and the simulated user could either, right before the breakpoint, it could either respond with negative hearing or negative understanding. And these dialogues were presented in both audio and text to the uh, test participants. If the user responded with negative hearing, then a simple repetition of the theme string was the highest ranked option. And if the user responded with negative understanding, then the, a restatement based on previously grounded information was the highest ranked option. And this, these are all statistically significant uh, differences. And this allows us to conclude that experiment participants preferred a system that adapts differently to different types of feedback and the, in a way that is enabled by our grounding graph model. So, our conclusions. Uh, it is justified to make a system that adapts referring expressions in this way, and knowledge graphs are a good way to do it. This also happens to address the content generation problem in a scalable way. We can just have our system generate any presentation from Wikidata, present anything, as long as we tell it how to express certain properties. Uh, of course, there are other ways to go from triples to text, and uh, that's been explored in the past by other authors, than just this simple theme model. Uh, and we still need to address the signal identification problem where we take a signal shown by the user and map it to a grounding level, as we are currently addressing that with video analysis and machine learning. Thank you for listening.